dear brother and sister in Christ, what a great chance to get together and to continue our series about the fasting of uh, Saint Mary. This is our third, uh, like I would say, episode in this stream of, of this series of uh, 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 the history of this fasting and the story of the, the departure and the ascension of uh, uh, Saint Mary. Uh, before I start, I would like to share with you a verse from the book of Jeremiah that I read it this morning and I, I could see, I could link it to what I'm going to, so, to talk about uh, this, this, uh, this episode. The verse say, from the book of Jeremiah chapter 23, it says, Who tried to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor, as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Uh, he was talking to Jeremiah about those false prophets and teachers that through their very own man-made stories, they eventually lead the people to forget the name of Yahweh, which actually what's happening nowadays. Every time that when they speak about anything, they have only talking about the appearance of so-and-so, the miracles of so-and-so. And very rare now when you hear about Jesus. And during this coming two weeks, what are you going to hear about? Only St. Mary, glorification to St. Mary, procession, St. Mary, fasting of St. Mary, all the sermons about St. Mary, where is Jesus? Not there. Uh, also in the book of Tasbaha, Salmodiyah, uh, I give an example because we'll come to this. In the uh, Tasbaha of Sunday, I've counted them. There are seven pages glorification to Jesus and more than 35 pages glorification of St. Mary. So Jesus, about only one-fifth of the whole thing. So St. Mary is seven times Jesus. This is what happens. So these are people who would like you to forget the name of Jesus and, for, and remember all the name or any other name, even the church names, what the church names are called for whatever, but not for, for the Lord of God. Okay? Okay, let's start. Uh, so the story of, of the episode of today is when it says in the uh, in uh, in the synaxarium on their way to bury Saint Mary, some of the Jews blocked the way in the face of the disciples to prevent the burial. We commented on this last time. One of them, of those guys, seized the coffin. His hands were separated from his body. And it remained, remained like that until the disciples like, uh, 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 prayed for, for him and he believed in Christ. This is definitely like a false story. But now, why they in inserted this story? This is the topic of today. It's actually belong to a heresy. This heresy, it's in, in their teachings and is totally tailored in detail in the book of Psalmodeia. They say that St. Mary is the Ark of Covenant. All right? And there is a similar story in the Bible about the Ark of Covenant that someone touched it and he died. So they came with this idea, let's create a, a similar story that some, someone touched the coffin of St. Mary and his hands were uh, separated from his body. Let's read this story from the Bible. Now, uh, now we know the, the story. And we'll see how it goes. Now, okay, here we go. Uh, this is in the book of Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter 6. It says, Again, David gathered the old men, all choice men of Israel, 3,000, and David arose and went with his people uh, to an area named ba ba Bale Judah to bring the ark of God. It was there. Somehow it was there. I, I have to, uh, to skip... It was a fight between uh, the Israelites and the Palestinians. They lost the bat battle and the Palestinians seized the Ark of Covenant. And after a while, they let, let it go. And it stayed at uh, a person's place named uh, Abinadab. And David then decided, okay, I have to bring the Ark of Covenant from Abinadab into Jerusalem. So he went up there uh, to bring the uh, the Ark of, Cov of, of Covenant. And uh, uh, then David and all the house of Israel played music, 
like singing before the Lord while they were bringing the Ark of Covenant on a new chariot. Okay, so now was David dancing before Saint Mary or before the Lord? This is just a quick, a quick one uh, playing with symbols. And when they came to Nachon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand on the ark of God and he took hold of it for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah and God struck him there for his error and he died there by the ark of God. So what happened to, to summarize it? David and uh, 30,000 people went like, to, welcome, to bring this Ark of Covenant down from where it was to bring it to Jerusalem. Okay, in their way, so the, the Ark of Covenant was put in a new chariot uh, driven by or pulled by uh, two oxen. And there were two people, two brothers, one was in the front and uh, the other one named the Ozza was like around it, like to be make sure everything is safe. And during their journey, the oxen stumbled. So Ozza. Uh, was concerned that the Ark of Covenant would fail. So he touched it, he put his hand on the Ark of Covenant, lest it should fall. But what happened? The Lord unfortunately struck him and died. Okay? Now I understand. So to assure that St. Mary is the Ark of Covenant, they came with this idea. So if you are really a good mess that you know that the like me, or like I was, and also you know the Bible well, like, I am, praise the Lord. Now we can link those together. Okay? Now, if we study more about the Ark of Covenant in the Bible, will we will find it representing, we'll find it representing the Messiah or St. Mary. Okay. Now, if I tell this something, I say, uh, tell me something that has four, four legs. You might say a table or a chair. You might say, uh, a dog or a cat, then I say, no, 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 it's an animal. Then you, you drop those ones and say, ah, uh, uh, animal, okay, dog, cat, de donkey, horse. Uh, then I tell you, no, it, it's a very big body. Then you might say, uh, camel, elephant. Then I tell you, with very long uh, neck. Then you might say, camel. Uh, then you might say, no, it is not, they might say, giraffe. Then maybe hit it. So let's study now. As a Bible study, now this part of the episode, some other parts where the Ark of Covenant was mentioned. And we see, was it representing St. Mary? Because in the Old Testament, should be pointing to something. Or was representing or pointing to the Messiah, Lord Jesus Christ. So don't say something with four legs, then it is, that's it. No, take more and more specifications. Maybe you find out it is not uh, the animal that he was looking for. So that was the first one. So we can see now it is called the Ark of Covenant, the Ark of the Lord of Hosts, not St. Mary. And David was playing with this and glorifying Mary when he was doing this before the, the Ark of the Lord. No, he was not. And Uzzah was killed because he touched St. Mary or because he touched the Ark of God, which is representing the presence of God. Now, think, let's take the second story. Second story. In the book of First Samuel chapter 4, there was a, a, a war between the Palestinians and the Israelites. And in the first round, uh, the Israelites were defeated and lost 4,000 people. Then they came with an idea that actually used to be done by pagans. They used to carry their like gods with them into the battlefield. So the Israelites this time came with the same idea. They said, how about if we bring the uh, Ark of Covenant? At the time it was in the area named Shiloh. At the time was the time of Eli, the high priest, and his sons, which were very bad guys. So actually the system at the time, it was very much corrupted system. The worship system, I mean, it was full of corruption. Uh, even up to sexual immoralities was carried by those priests at that time. Same like what we've heard last week about these guys that uh, abused the 
Sally Zachary. So they came with the same idea, although the Lord never told them that they are allowed to take the Ark of Covenant. It should be there and no one to come near it even. So they come with the idea, okay, let's go and take it with us that he might help us. But in fact, they went there and they were defeated again. And even the, the Philistines seized the Ark of Covenant. Uh, and this quickly to show us that God is not a superstition thing that you take him, take him with you, then you will defeat your enemies while your life is not glorifying God. So your behavior should be representing God so God can like, be on your side. But if your behavior is very bad, you will live a sinful life and then you say, oh, I'll take the Bible with me and go somewhere here or there. Now, will not help you. God is not a superstition thing. Uh, some people, they put like a cross in the car and they think this will prevent accidents. No, no. Or they put like a, a, a Bible or an Agbeya under the pillow that this will take your nightmare. No, it is not, this not a magic thing. It's the relationship between you and the guy. Anyway, so what happened? Uh, when the Israelites took the uh, Ark of Covenant with them, uh, they were actually chanting to the Lord. But what happened? Uh, they said, let's take him with us and uh, he will help us. And even the Philistines, when they heard that this, this big shouting, said, oh God, uh, we, uh, yes, guys, be careful. God has come into the camp. The Philistines con like confessed, this is the, the God of Israelites came to the battlefield. And they said, woe to us for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us. Who will deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? So the Palestinians like proves on confessing it is the mighty God. These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. So this is second time now we find what? The Ark of Covenant was taken to the war as what? As the God of Israel to help them, not as St. Mary. So this second time, and even the Palestinians considered it as the, uh, as the God. And even when they seized him, they put him into the big temple of the gods, of their gods as a sort of respect. They said, he is a God, we have to respect him. Yes, he was defeated. There's no problem with that. But still, we have to respect him as a God. So this is second point to prove that the Ark of Covenant is representing the presence of God. Number three. Number three is really also a great one. Hey, here we go. It's from Psalm uh, 114. Let's read something there. It says, what's this Psalm talking about? It says, when Israel went out of Egypt, you remember the story with, with Moses? The house of Jacob from the people of strange language, with the Egyptians, Judah became his sanctuary. Good. And Israel, his dominion. Great. The sea saw it and fled. He's talking now about when the Red Sea was split in front of the uh, Israelites to cross. So it says, like the sea saw the glory of God and the split and the fled, so people could uh, pass. We all know this one. Uh, but what did the rest of the verse says, Jordan turn it back. What's Jordan? Means here the Jordan River. Turn it back. O sea that you fled. O Jordan, that you turn it back. So it says now, so it's talking, now we're going to focus on what happened, what, what, what is talking about the Jordan turning back. What happened? i tell you what happened. Yeah. The story of this psalm is in the book of Joshua chapter 3. I quickly tell you, at the end of the journey from Egypt to the uh, promised land, which took about 40 years, Moses died and Joshua took over. At the last stage, they were to the east side, the eastern side of the Jordan River. Now to go into the land, the promised land, they have to cross the Jordan River, the same like when they had to cross the Red Sea. So what happened at the time, it was very like the time of harvest and it was the, the, the full time of the, uh, I would say, the rainfall. Then the Lord told Joshua, told him, of course, you don't worry about this. I'll take care of that. So I told him, let the priests 
carry the Ark of Covenant. And once they put their feet in the river of Jordan, the Jordan River, what happened? He told them that the water will stop like what happened in the Red Sea and people will cross. Let's read this one. And as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priests who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water of the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest that the water which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam. This is a city. The city that is beside Zartan, Zaritan. So the waters that went down into the Sea of Araba, that is the Red Sea, the Salt Sea, failed and they were cut off. And the people crossed over opposite to Jericho. So this is what is meant by Jordan turn it back. O oh Jordan, how do you turn it back? So it says Jordan saw something and stopped. As it says, the sea saw and ordered the Jordan saw something. So what happened? You know, you understand now? Once they dipped their feet, those ones carrying what? The Ark of Covenant. So the psalmist says, the Jordan saw something, like what happened in the Red Sea, and the water was stopped, and even stopped far away. So people feel very safe. So the question now is, the Red Sea saw the glory of God, then the, the, the water was split. And what happened with the Jordan River? river? So what, again? So the presence of the God of hosts, the Lord of hosts. So, Yahweh, not Saint Mary. So, this is the third one. So, now, nah, it was not Saint Mary. So, the Ark of Covenant representing the presence of Yahweh. We'll take also a third, a fourth one, and this one is a stunning one. It is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, and it is regarding the uh, Day of Atonement, the Day of uh, uh, Forgiveness of the Sins of Israelites over one year. So it was done every year. And the Lord said to Moses, to Moses this is in the book of Leviticus chapter 16, Tell Aaron, your brother, who is the high priest, not to come at just any time into the holy place, Inside the veil, this is the Holy of Holies, or the like where the Ark of Covenant is. Before the mercy seat, it was also called the mercy seat, which is on the Ark. So the Ark of Covenant, it was like a box, and it has also a lid. Or a, and the Lord used to appear actually uh, at the top of the Ark of Covenant when he was speaking to Moses. And he now is warning that don't, Make sure that Aaron doesn't go anywhere at, at any time as he pleases uh, into that place, uh, lest he die. For I will, the Lord is talking, I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. So actually, the, the, Holy, of, the Holy of Holies is where the presence of God, where Yahweh used to appear, not St. Mary. Let's go deeper. And about the rites of the sacrifice on that day, the Lord said, And the Aaron shall bring the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make anoint, uh, sorry, atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bull, bull as the sin offering, which is for him. Then he shall take a censer full of burning coals, of fire from the altar before the Lord with his hands full of sweet incense beaten fine and bring it inside the veil inside the veil where the Ark of Covenant is and he shall put incense on the fire before the Lord not before St. Mary that 
the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony. The Ark of Covenant sometimes called testimony, by the way, lest he die. So he was offering incense to whom? To God or to St. Mary? Those are uh, the, uh, the worshipping idols only offering the incense to St. Mary, as I mentioned, not last episode, the first one. But here, they're offering the incense into the Lord, not before the Lord, not before St. Mary. No, sorry. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and, bring, and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seat, which is the cover or the top or the lid of the uh, Ark of Covenant, as what? To the, to the east and before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times, like that. And sprinkle it in the mercy seat and before the mercy seat, seat, so he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions for all their sins. So what does this mean? So uh, the, 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 uh, the high priest goes inside the Holy of Holies where the Ark of Covenant is to make with the blood atonement of the transgressions, the sins of the Israelites by sprinkling the blood of the uh, sacrifice on the uh, cover or the lid of the Ark of Covenant. So, is atonement to be done through St. Mary or through Jesus? I repeat this again. The atonement was done the, to God, not to St. Mary. So, there is no way that they can say St. Mary is the Ark of Covenant. This is a heresy. This is a heresy. This is taking the glory of God, give it to St. Mary. This is absolutely incorrect. This is absolutely Idol worship. Okay, let's go to a, a little spiritual thing for this story. And we will continue now. There shall be no man in the tabernacle of the meeting when he goes, the high priest, in to make atonement in the holy place until he comes out that he may make atonement for himself and for the house of Israel. I would like you to take a few minutes to reflect with me on this. So what, what does this mean? On that day, the day of atonement, the day of forgiveness, Yom Kippur in, in, in Hebrew, when the high priest goes into the holy place, which he goes into the holy place only on that day per year, and he goes there twice, one first time to make atonement for his own sins, then the second time atonement for the sins of the Israelites. And the Bible says, the instruction says, on that day when he goes in, no one ever to be within the whole tabernacle. The tabernacle is was there was like a, a big court, then the holy, then the holy of holies. He said, on that day, no one ever to be within the, premi the, the, the uh, perimeter of this place. The whole thing, totally out. Like you say, they are totally out of the temple, for example, when it comes to the temple. Why the high priest doing this? While he's doing this? Uh -huh. What does this mean? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means what? Lord Jesus Christ, on his own capacity, by his own alone, he will do the atonement, not for himself, he is sinless, but for the people. You understand? For us. So this to show what? We don't need anyone to help Jesus in his atonement or redemptive work. And this means what? You have your direct relationship with him. No one to be around. He does the job and the veil was split anyway when he was uh, on the cross. All right, so I would like if you can feel this and you, you feel proud and you feel rejoicing that since the very beginning, 
it was known that Jesus will do the atonement by his own alone. He is the only one can do it. And he doesn't need assistance of anyone. Last thing, we notice that in the furniture of the tabernacle, there is no, there is no sh chair, there is no seat for the high priest to sit on. Why? Because actually what he does is not a real atonement or forgiveness. It was just a symbolic thing. So he cannot say, okay, done, and see it now. But we read in the book of Hebrews that Jesus did the atonement. Then he was seated at the right hand of uh, the Father. Let's read this together. Uh, book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. Now, this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest, Jesus Christ, who is seated at the right hand of the throne of of the majesty in the heavens. Hallelujah. One more. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice, we don't need another one. So when they say, uh, we offer sacrifice, absolute crap. Incorrect. This happened on the third century, not before that. Before that, nothing called sacrifice at all. At the right hand of the throne of the majesty, uh, sorry, this by but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. He did it once, we don't need to repeat it again. And after that, he said, It is finished, perfect, and sat down. So, no need to repeat it again. Any other names to go around, they're going around the bush, they are not telling you the truth. So to summarize this one quickly, St. Mary never ever could be symbolized by the uh, Ark of Covenant. It is a, a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus Christ himself alone to do the atonement, and he already did it, and now he deserves to sit, to sit down at the right hand side of the Father. And what actually he does over there, he is interceding for you and for me and you don't need anyone to intercede for us only Jesus can do this may the Lord bless you if the Lord doesn't come we'll continue another episode about the story of Thomas the part of the story about Thomas and we'll see was he in India at that time it's a myth we'll find this next episode before I go I need to offer you or invite you to make a decision now you can see they, they forge the Bible, they forge the interpretation, they worship idols. I would invite you to leave this place and find a proper place, a proper church to worship in. It's your choice, but I offer you this luck call. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you again if the Lord doesn't come. Salam alaikum.